Google announced nearly 20 new updates and features during the BET conference in London. These updates add some cool new instructional capabilities for Google Classroom, some new collaboration options for Google Docs and Meet, and some nifty new capabilities to Chromebooks. Let's check them out. Hi, my name is John Sowash. I help teachers and students use Google products in the classroom. Let's start with some updates to Google Classroom first. Google has announced that practice sets will be moving out of beta and generally available to anyone who is using the Education Plus or Teaching and Learning editions of Google Workspace. I've been using practice sets for a little while. As a beta tester, it's a great new feature for Classroom that makes it a lot easier to create and assign practice problems to students. One of the neat updates that is included is the ability to share practice sets with other teachers. This is a nice new feature that will make it a lot easier for new teachers to get started with this uh, new capability. Next up for Google Classroom, we have interactive YouTube videos. This is pretty slick. You can select a YouTube video and then add multiple choice questions to that YouTube video, which will automatically pop up at certain points in the timeline. This is very similar to what Edpuzzle offers, and all of it will happen right within Google Classroom. The final update for Google Classroom is the ability to add marking periods to your courses. This will allow you to sort your gradebook by marking period, not by due date or when that assignment was assigned, and allow you to split your class into quarters, semesters, trimesters, whatever grading uh, period your school uses. Morgan Weissman, one of the members of the Google for Education team, joined me on the Chromebook Classroom podcast and did indicate that this new feature is the first step to to allowing teachers to lock assignments that have passed. That feature is not currently available, but is being worked on and is expected to launch in the future. You can listen to my interview with Morgan by searching for the Chromebook Classroom Podcast on your favorite podcast app. Let's move on to Google Meet. The first two updates demonstrate the deeper integration of Google Meet and Google Slides. First off, you can now see your speaker notes when presenting through Google Meet. That has been available for a little while now, but you can also now co-present with another person virtually. No more awkwardly saying, next slide, please. Multiple people in your meeting can advance the slides um, during a meeting. We also have expanded language support for closed captions. This is a pretty remarkable feature that allows uh, users to see closed captioning in their language of choice. That'll be available later in 2023. And then finally, one of the coolest things, Google is using artificial intelligence to automatically detect a physically raised hand and use that to initiate the hand raise icon in Google Meet. So students or meeting participants can simply raise their hand while on video and it will trigger that hand raise feature. A really simple but really cool new feature for Google Meet. Google has put a lot of time and energy into this idea of a smart canvas for Google Docs. We've been looking at smart chips and lots of new features for Google Docs over the last 12 to 18 months, and Google is making several big announcements that expand this idea here today. First, Google is introducing a new voting chip that allows users to vote on ideas right from within Google Docs. It's pretty slick. Um, you put the voting chip in, and then users can select various emojis to um, indicate their approval or disapproval for various ideas. This will be a very interesting feature for classroom teachers uh, to democratize the classroom. Secondly, Google is introducing a timer and stopwatch chip for Google Docs. This will allow you to count up or count down time to put a timed activity or record how long it takes uh, to accomplish a, a particular task. Those chips will be available here uh, very, very soon. Finally, Google announced that they were working on custom building blocks for Google Docs. Those will be launching this spring, allowing you to create custom insertable elements of content into a Google document. Teachers are going to love this. It's going to make it super easy for you to save a rubric, a template, instructions, and quickly add that into a document with just a couple of clicks. Next up, we get to talk about Chromebooks, my personal favorite, and there is a lot to discuss. First off, Google is introducing reader mode for Chrome. This is a feature that will take web articles and simplify it to improve the reading experience. The article that accompanied this feature indicates 
indicated that roughly 20% of individuals have some type of a reading disability, with dyslexia being the most common. Google has never added a feature specifically designed to help individuals with reading disabilities. They have a lot of low vision uh, features, but nothing for uh, reading disabilities. So this will help everybody incre increase their reading speed and interact with web articles more effectively. Next up, we have several updates related to the Screencast app that Google announced, oh, six, eight months ago. I did a video on this. It's a great way to create instructional content for your students easy to create, easy to edit, easy to share. First off, Google is announcing that they are expanding language support so that you can translate and record um, videos in various languages that will be rolling out later this spring. And then they're also going to begin recording clicks and keyboard shortcuts. Again, the point of the screencast app is you're doing a tutorial or an instruction on using a tool. And so you can draw on the screen as you're clicking, it will emphasize that. And then if, if you use keyboard shortcuts, it will display those keyboard shortcuts on the screen, helping your viewer understand what you're doing. The final thing, which is the most important, up until this point, any videos you create with the Screencast app were only watchable on a Chromebook. Google has announced that they are building a web player that will be available for all platforms so that you can create videos through the Screencast app on a Chromebook and share them regardless of what type of device your viewers are using. Google's also announcing some updates to Cast Moderator, their special software update for Chromecast specifically designed for classroom sharing. With Cast Moderator, teachers can wirelessly share their screen to the front of the room and allow students to do so if they wish. There's a password that is generated and the teachers can share that password with students if they want to allow them to share their screen as well. The two new updates that Google are, is announcing are, first of all, the ability to switch tabs um, very quickly without needing to stop and restart the stream. And then secondly, the ability to freeze the screen, allowing a teacher to continue working on their device while still maintaining an image up on the screen. Cast Moderator is pretty slick. It's relatively new. I recently spoke with an IT administrator who's deployed cast moderator to their entire district and they absolutely love it that is a very quick overview of all of the major updates coming from google during the 2023 bet conference in london there's a lot more about each of these updates that you should probably know i wrote a detailed blog post about them you can find a link to that blog post in the video description most of these updates do require that your school use the education plus or teaching and learning editions of google workspace you'll need to make sure you know which edition you're using to know which updates will apply to you if you're an it administrator Administrator. I'd also encourage you to check out a related video that I put together on some Google admin updates coming out of the BET conference. You can check out that video by clicking uh, over on the left side of your screen. And if you like Google updates like this, make sure you subscribe to the channel. I'll have videos on all of these updates coming out in the next few months.